Hello team, hello members. You know, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, uh, welcome to AMIT again and welcome for a very engaging interactive session which is going to start soon. So to introduce the speakers, I'm going to call in uh, Suman. Suman, can you click on raise hand? Yes, please. Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon and a big thank you for joining us today. I hope you all grab your seats and you can uh, see or hear me as we begin this. Uh, I guess the best way to get uh, people digitally close but physically distance was this. So welcome to IET India's Digital Conversation Series as we kickstart our first session today on navigating your career through COVID-19. I'm Suman Bhamek, I lead the events for IIT in India. Before we begin this session, I would like to take two minutes to guide you through our partner's uh, AME platform. As you can see, uh, you have all joined as an attendee in the social lounge. This lounge gives you the opportunity to chat with group people who are sitting in a table. You can choose to join conversations at any time by leaving this table and grabbing a vacant seat at some other table. During the session, while the speakers are presenting or speaking, you may post your questions through the questions feature under the chat option to extreme right. The speakers will take them once they finish presenting or speaking. You may also choose to come on the stage to ask your questions to the speaker when they ask you to raise a hand. The raise a hand feature can be also found on the right hand side of the screen. Please make sure that you're in a quiet place when you ask these questions to avoid noisy background. Now, kindly allow me to introduce you to our first speaker and the moderator for this event, Mr. Sekhar Samyal. He's the country head and director of the IIT in India. Sekhar has an amazing track record of turning around organizations from stagnancy to performance within a short span. He specializes in building effective social and business platforms to multiply the impact and growth of organizations. At IIT India, he leads over 1,000 volunteers in South Asia to help impact areas like IoT and emerging technologies, future of mobility and transport, and the future of work. I hope you enjoy and benefit from this session and request you to all stay tuned for our next session of the Digital Conversation Series, which will take place next Friday on the 3rd of April. Over to you, Shekhar. Thank you, Suman. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us today for the first IT India Digital Conversation. Let me start by hoping and wishing that everybody, wherever you are, is safe and secure. Uh, with me today, I have got a bunch of very illustrious speakers, two of them, in fact, uh, Lux Rao and Manish Bal. Uh, let me introduce both those speakers to you. Lux. Lux is the director of and leader for solutions and digital transformation at Entity Data, Entity India, I'm sorry. As a leader for digital businesses, Lux is responsible for devising the strategy and the game plan and leads the charge uh, for entities for a digitally enabling organizations across sectors and industries, thereby adding impetus to the digital solutions business at Dimension Data. Lux has a rich experience in multifarious roles spanning IT hardware and software solutions, sales channel management, product management, product support, pre-sales, competency development, and customer service in organizations such as IBM, uh, Canon, and Xerox. He has been awarded the prestigious IDC Award for Excellence in Innovation for the year 2015 and the best CTO digital transformation for the year 2015-16 by Tech Plus Media. Uh, the other speaker that we have today is Manish Bal. Manish is a passionate futurist and advisor with a compelling perspective on technology and its impacts, impact on jobs, individuals, society, and the future of work. Within Cognizant's Center for the Future of Work, he helps ensure that the unit's original research and analysis jibes with the emerging business technology trends and the dynamics in Asia Pacific. And he collaborates with a wide range of leading thinkers to understand how the future of work will take shape. Manish's view on technology and the future of work has been featured in leading publications, and he's a frequent keynote speaker at various national and international conferences. Uh, Lux, and Manish both are also very integrately involved with the IT and the work that, they, that we do. Lux is part of our 
IoT India panel and the IoT India Congress that we run. And Manish is uh, part of the Engineering the Future of Work uh, event that we do, as well as part of the panel which runs the future of work for the IT. Now, gotten to know all the speakers, let's plunge in to what we are going to talk about. So today we are going to talk about careers. Careers in this uncertain times, the times of a pandemic. You know, all of us, most of us, I think, or probably all of us, office workers are now working from homes. And as most of you would have experienced by now, it's a strange new world of work. All the lines that we have created around work and home are starting to get blurred. Colleagues, customers, and business partners suddenly have a glimpse of your personal space, which sometimes might be in complete contrast to a carefully built public image of you. Then there is the impatience of the just arrived work from home workers against the world weariness of veteran remote workers. The Johnny arrived last week remote worker wants to see the people while having meetings, while veteran remote workers are more comfortable with just audio. The new entrants talk, to talk about getting dressed up as if you're going to office every morning versus veteran who might only be dressing up if they step out of their houses, which at this point of time, nobody is doing. In India, with the current lockdown, many of us are on a steep learning curve on managing office while or work while washing dishes, sweeping, mopping, etc. Even our families are aligning to the new normal. My son and I, for instance, are learning the art of hot desking as I take over his study table during the day on weekdays. And as you can see, there's Donald Duck behind me and there is a uh, uh, tiger behind us, so you can very well understand that I'm speaking from my son's room. You know, additionally, children are learning to be quieter in the house, while parents are controlling the irresistible urge to ask children about their studies and academics every time they see them. The strong tug from the likes of Netflix, Prime, YouTube, etc., compete with the very tempting invitation of a mid-afternoon nap. All these are strange new things that we are not used to. On top of that, social isolation is adding a layer that can have impact on mental health and well-being. Uh, loneliness is something that quite a lot of us are grappling with. In fact, more and more remote workers are finding that they end up working more hours than they were ever working before. And all this is in contrast to the decades of conditioning that we have. Adding to all this is the technical and security challenges, the issue of keeping ourselves relevant while the world is going into a tailspin. So what should we do? Work has already moved to your home. Let's start by figuring out, do you have what it takes to manage the technology? Let's, I'll turn to Lux now and look at what are the things that is required for the remote worker to look at, how do you work on managing the technology part of this remote working thing? We have heard stories about connectivity, challenges or not having challenges. We have been told, don't use video as much. Security is always a challenge. Collaborating from a distance across a screen. And finally, organizations who are worried about how do you make sure that the people who are working are productive? So all these things are things that we have to manage in this new world. So Lux, uh, let me ask you, what are the things that home workers should be doing to manage this at this point of time? Uh, great question. And I think you've actually taken away all the lines. You know, this is the new normal shaker, as you rightly pointed out. And I would reckon that we got to get used to it. Uh, the next few weeks, uh, you know, and God forbid months is actually going to be, you know, work from home scenarios as actually the uh, world tries to, you know, come to grips with this pandemic, which is actually raging. Uh, the last time such a scenario happened was about a uh, hundred years ago when you didn't have IT systems to boast of when the Spanish flu ravaged the world. But today, as we actually are speaking, I think uh, there is a tremendous amount of, you know, 
need for businesses to actually continue for people to work and uh, i think as uh, it's begin it's begun to sink in you know lockdown is going to continue to be there we'll have to live in a world that actually means that you know you get confined to domestic spaces actually for long hours uh, does that mean that you know we will we have let work suffer uh, that is not a viable option at all so uh, when we were actually thinking about you know what should really be the right approach uh, the one standing question that actually came up uh, across the board you know with clients with partners with colleagues with peers everybody was can we be effective actually working from home as we are at office and if so what does it take for us to actually be effective working from home that's really you know the question that's the moot right now now uh, i have actually got a short uh, slide deck here um, maybe a uh, shaker can is do you think is the right time for me to actually touch upon those and then come back into the conversation yeah sure let's please go ahead okay so i'll share a slide deck with all of you yeah um this is what i'm sharing with you is actually a program that's been introduced uh, already within our organization ntt and we call it the care program which is basically about you know crisis advisory and response for enterprises uh, how do we uh, ensure that you know businesses actually stay in business and you know we are effective as workers as managers as leaders in the face of a unprecedented unplanned and perennially under threat kind of a scenario so i think to start with actually let's uh, look at what's the new normal now this is the new normal and i think shekhar actually spoke about it already then the question that comes up is really you know how do we make employees work from home as productive as they are at office point number 1 and if even if we did hypothetically let's say actually we did that you know this moment on how do we secure organization our organizations in the new scheme of vastly distributed working nodes uh, when i mean vastly what i mean by vastly distributed working nodes is that you step into the office you are in the confines of an office maybe 100 seats 5000 seats 10000 seats you are in a confined campus and suddenly you know you are now actually reaching out multiple points and while actually addressing some of the needs of our clients you know some of them are really large organizations with 50 60 80000 employees even uh, they are faced with an unprecedented scenario of you know having 80000 nodes logging into you know systems you know working from remote uh, no one planned for it you know none of the organizations not even it organizations have actually planned for this kind of a scenario uh and uh, and uh, infrastructure which is actually designed for and can it sustain a 100% remote working scenario uh when we do the business continuity planning and a lot of uh, folks actually use business continuity planning as the silver bullet that will actually address all eventualities but it's come up begging it there is actually it has come so short in addressing the current scenario uh we are actually catering to so many client requirements in this area it's unprecedented so uh, most of the business planning uh, business continuity planning scenarios have actually factored in 15% concurrent workers actually working from home which means 15% of their employee base will actually log in from home uh, no one actually thought that you know in one uh, one fell moment 100% of the employees have to actually work from home and therefore they're not planned at all so i just want to actually you know walk you through the technology piece what are some of the technologies that are available today out of the bat something that can be implemented in a very quick time that can help uh, people work from home and actually be effective we call it the near real experience uh, if not actually you know creating a office kind of an environment with centralized air, con air conditioning and all that but at least from a work uh, you know accessing actually in you know, office systems perspective and most of them actually are digital anyways so it is actually uh, e uh, pretty easy to get this thing up and running Uh, in the next slide we talk about you know and this is actually uh, after a lot of uh, evaluation of a lot of best practices and things that we've actually gone through enabling our clients you know to be up and running in the in in eight hours since actually you know the lockdown was announced in india and elsewhere uh, one of the fundamental things actually in today's world is the connect part the seamless connect to access enterprise network anytime and anywhere in a secure manner is of paramount importance team collaboration how do we actually continue working with teams how do we actually continue working with our coworkers uh, who are sitting in the confines of their homes and then actually be effective in uh, reaching project deadlines and the like and then once we have actually got that how do we make sure it is actually secure how do we ensure that you know all of the carefully built secure images in an organization will not really you know uh, 
flounder uh, because of so many threat uh, vectors that have actually come up now. Uh, so what we mean by that is, you know, with so many endpoints that are actually there, uh, it is actually a hacker's dream. They can get into any vulnerable system and actually hack into the enterprise network and cause havoc or create havoc over there. So how do we actually ensure that a secure access is you know provided? And then how do we actually track productivity, particularly India with with a lot of knowledge workers and with actually you know we being the back office to, to pretty much the entire planet. Uh, you know a lot of organizations actually get paid by the number of minutes or hours they bill or their agents bill. So then, therefore, it's a valid question by their clients, which uh, who ask them the question, you know, uh, how do I know if actually the agent was not, you know, sitting on a Netflix or an Amazon Prime, and I shouldn't actually pander to the fantasies of actually agents who are watching movies, and then I, I get billed for it. Always the question that comes up in everybody's mind. So what are actually the kind of productivity tools that are there that can help uh, home agents' productivity, you know, be tracked uh, constantly? Uh, and uh, in the next minute or so, uh, we uh, will have all of this actually shared uh, to all the registrants uh, for this webinar. So, but uh, in the interest of time, I'll actually quickly walk you through some of these solutions. Um, don't really actually, you know, uh, get inundated with a lot of messaging over here. What I would say is that across the pillars of collaboration, connect, secure access and productivity, we got a bunch of solutions that will actually help organizations and employees up and running in pretty quick time. Uh, so it could be an enterprise application that actually has to be accessed. Uh, you can't imagine, you know, the havoc it would create if someone actually accessed an enterprise application, you know, sitting in a, uh, in, on a computer that has actually been compromised and therefore providing a Trojan horse or an entry to a hacker with a malified intent of bringing down your enterprise network or actually holding the enterprise to ransom. So the solutions that we have over here are actually written over here. I won't, don't want to go into all of the detailing, but I just would like to say that, you know, if you are thinking of working from home, you or your organization should be looking at all of these aspects over here. So like I said earlier, a detailed explanation of each of these is available on a slide that will be coming across to you for all the registrants you know, shortly just after this uh, webinar gets done. So, and how, how are we helping in this area? We kind of actually, you know, uh, put together a team, a SWAT team that will actually help you with the connecting, with the secure access, the collaboration and the productivity tools that I actually talked about. And I would like to, you know, leave one message for you. I mean, this is a very humane message in the, in the current scenario of things. And I think Shekhar, you actually, you know, articulated it beautifully, which I couldn't have, uh, which talked about, you know, some of us are actually, you know, engaged in domestic chores. Some of us actually, you know, are taking care of the child or actually doing things like cooking and things like that. So what happens now? And everybody's getting a peek into our living room and the carefully cultivated, you know, image and thing, all of that actually, you know, then comes to immense amount of scrutiny. So as an organization, what NTT put out as a message actually is something like this. And I really wanted to share with this all, with all of you. This, I think actually, you know, really resonated with a lot of our clients and a lot of our viewers. And uh, this is what we stand for as an organization. I'll let it be there for you to read through this thing. So one of the things that actually, you know, we've realized now is that, you know, family is very much in the office now, you know, so you will have a kid yelling in the background. You have a pressure cooker actually running off in the background. You could actually have people talking. You could be having a, if there's a teenage kid at home, there could be music blaring. All of these things are actually a part of the, uh, you know, part of the family. So, you know, you got to welcome that. And this actually calls for a huge psychological change. And in many ways, you know, the way we look at things, you know, I don't think actually we need to, you know, enforce some of these things on our family members by calling for pin drop silence or actually not making any noise and all that. Why should they be under curfew at home? Because they're also part of the family. I wanted to actually, you know, live this entire technology aspect with a human view and actually, you know, let, uh, you know, uh, let Shaker take over from here. So uh, Shaker, actually, you know, back to you. And these are some perspectives in terms of technology that can help. And uh, with, over a dialogue, we can continue discussing about the same you know, as it actually pans out. Thank you, Lux. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, great uh, insight. And as you said, uh, the details of what you presented, the tools, etc., will be available to all the people who attended. 
obviously we have a one hour window so everything can't be shared on on this point of time but we will send out a report uh, and then we will take it out from there now we talked about technology we talked about how the system is moving to work but i think something that is uh, we all are worried about as i said when the world is going into a tailspin as to how do we remain relevant what's next where do we look for how do uh, we keep making ourselves relevant in this new age not only with the current issues that's happening uh, which hopefully fingers crossed we should get over at some point of time but also the fact that the world it's by itself was changing even before that and this current pandemic is only going to accelerate it manifold so i would like to reach out to manish and ask him that what are his views on how we prepare for the future as as the world is changing that uh, unfortunately you will not be able to see manish on a video but you will be able to hear him so bringing manish into the conversation manish i believe uh, the current ongoing situation means that automation is going to come much sooner than what we had anticipated across uh, many sectors and processes so the recession which is going to get caused by the virus will likely lead to a spike in automation meaning some of the jobs lost to the virus will uh, you know never return there is no doubt about it as companies restructure their operations so we have been automating for decades if you just think about it and this time the speed to the next level of automation will liberate us from many of the monotonous and repetitive work tasks that we do in our day to day work lives for instance order entry data processing accounts payable and receivable so these are the repetitive jobs you know should be taken care by machines at the end so as a result of automation right what's going to happen we believe many individuals will need to adapt to changing uh, uh, you know work task or even switch to new occupations entirely and point themselves in multiple career directions so these days you know skills have become like mobile apps that need frequent upgrades making multiple careers rather than just jobs the new norm so resume headlines like i have over 20 years of proven experience as a banker are going to be a thing of the past and rather new profile headlines like accountant who is also both a drone operator and a sky instructor you know is going to get a lot of attention so i think one day you know our grandchildren will laugh at the idea of spending their entire work life in just one career so the future of your career will be in careers a one career mindset is going to be a thing of the past and incidentally this leads to my second theme which is about new jobs creation so while automation you know will take take away you know some jobs there is no doubt about it many more new jobs and careers will also be created in the future that will provide tremendous opportunities for workers to create a diverse portfolio of careers and roles So in November 2017 you know we had published uh, this report 21 jobs of the future a guide to getting and staying employed in the next 10 years so in that report we proposed 21 new jobs that will emerge from a world of ai automation algorithms bots and big data so the jobs ranged from low tech and semi obvious like walker talker in a digital first world you still need someone you know you can talk to you can work with to the very high tech you know jobs like a genetic diversity officer so our 21 jobs of the future are positioned over a 10 year timeline and according to their tech centricity so some jobs are highly technical in nature and some jobs are not technical at all and these jobs are presented in the form of job description the way you see any jd today it's on similar lines but from future perspective they are not science fiction they are the jobs that our departments will have to fill before for you know very long and following the success of our earlier report we decided to produce a second edition you know 21 more jobs of the future that we did last year so once again we have outlined the, the jobs around the two axes of tech centricity and timeline and uh, to name some of the jobs we have created like flying car developer machine risk officer algorithm bias auditor chief purpose planner what is going to be the purpose of our existence what is the purpose of businesses existence in a digital first world so i recommend all of you to download and read these two reports which are available in the public domain to get a sense of jobs that will be there in the future and the third theme is in order to support these future jobs right we have to really focus on remote learning because the future of your career will not be determined will not be based on your last job title 
but will be based on the new skills you can develop for the road ahead. So many schools and colleges around the world are developing and experimenting with unique approaches that replace the physical with the virtual or even better, you know, meld them into a more dynamic learning environment. So for instance, to give an example, you know, my older son school has started virtual classes starting today, right? So obviously he's experiencing a new way of learning. So when humans are you know, forced to adapt to new ways of learning, we respond very, very quickly and positively. So, so the signs are very, very clear that change is upon us and remote learning will become the new style of, you know, lifelong learning and the abundance of content from, you know, massive open online courses. Uh, you have Coursera, Udacity and other platforms, as well as free open learning content, you know, that is coming from TED or MIT, as well as other sources. So these are the sources that provide an immense opportunity for individuals to benefit from already created content. So it'll be mandatory, I believe, for all of us to become lifelong learners through remote learning. And we have to acquire new skills, consume content in Netflix style, and consider artificial intelligence tools that are available in the market today as our trainers and teachers. So identifying skills quickly, finding the content online to support those skills, and uh, viewing digital as your trainer will shape the future of our uh, you know, learning once for all. So just to summarize, you know, the world around us is definitely full of choices. If you think about it, we have choices every day, uh, whether you want to have burger or pizza, you want to go to a gym or you want to do yoga, you want to have coffee or tea, sugar or spice. So we have all these choices that we make. And these are the choices that reflect the way we want to live, work and play. So why the world of work will be any different, the work you do today or the future of your work. So by giving ourselves an opportunity to explore new ways of thinking, new jobs, new roles, and even new passions, perhaps choices will be easier to make for all of us. So take the time to consider the choices we have today and make decision because the time is now and for now the choice is yours, the choice is ours basically. So these are the three you know, themes I really wanted to share with everyone. I'll take a pause here and uh, see if anyone has any you know, question, any thoughts, uh, on what we have, uh, you know, talked so far. Over to you, Shekhar. Thank you, Manish. Thank you very much. Right, guys. Now we come to the interesting part of this. The, we are opening the field up for questions or any kind of questions that you have for any one of us or all three of us. We are very happy to take. Please put up your hand. All right. I have got Anita Kaveri, who is requested for mic access. On you go, Anita. Hi. Thank you for such a lively and engaging discussion. Uh, I've always wondered about, uh, you know, the acceptability of the quick learning that we do on various virtual platforms. While many of us, you know, use the self-control to learn and finish a course, how do you improve the acceptability of, let's say, an employer to these skills? Does it even matter? Yeah, so let me take this one. Uh, so that's a very good question, right? Uh, recently, we did this report, relearning how we learn from the campus to the you know workplace, and uh, in that uh, report, you know, we spoke to around 400 businesses globally. We spoke to L and D departments. We spoke to various other uh, you know business functions to get a good understanding of how the learning is uh, you know sort of uh, delivered, perceived you know in these organizations. So definitely, there is a big gap. What we really found. Uh, you know, the way we are training our, uh, you know, people for the future of work. And uh, that's where we believe, uh, you know, organizations need to very much focus on rebooting three core elements of learning, the skill identification, what sort of skills that are going to be important in the future. AI robotics, definitely, it's quite obvious that these skills are going to be important. But what about soft skills? Soft skills that make us human, right? And how exactly we can help our people uh, to double down on uh, you know human centric skills. So even big data, data science jobs, you know, require a good combination of technical and soft skills because you should be able to tell a good story from the data findings you have got. You should be a good communicator. So so definitely helping uh, you know our people to double down on you know these skills is going to be important. And one another respect you know that we really found right. So one is uh, definitely the skill identification. Second is the content curation part that organizations are going to do. And third is about the way we deliver you know uh, training in our organizations and the fourth element is about the self-learning you know and that's where we found the organizations are going to double down on soft learning part which means that making employees accountable 
for their own learning because no matter how much investments you have made in learning the you know systems but if employees are not motivated enough uh, to to self learn the learning won't happen so definitely i think creating that culture of learning and providing all the tools and capabilities uh, you know to the employees so that uh, you know they can continue to acquire new skills new tools they can learn new tools and all that so definitely yes at this point of time uh, we believe there is a gap uh, in terms of the way learning is being delivered the way uh, employees consume you know uh, the learning in organizations which is going to get a lot of uh, you know a lot of traction and a lot of change that is going to happen so to your point definitely uh, i believe this uh, you know self learning this remote learning piece is going to get much more attention as organizations would understand that they have to really support you know employees and uh, the acceptability factor is only going to rise as we move forward thanks much oh. Thank you, thank you. Is there anybody else asking a question? We have got. Oh, Suman. I just wanted to ask one question that keeps coming back to my mind. Uh, you know, a lot of people, for a lot of employers, work from home. Uh, you know, leads to a lot of uh, doubt in terms of the trust issues and productivity challenges. So people actually end up working much, much more than what they're supposed to work. You know, when they are working in an office, so they are working till nine or ten in the in the in the night, and they hardly get time for any family duties or you know spending time for their self-learning methods. So uh, you know, what what's the you know what's the way out of this? How do we ensure that you know there's there is trust in place, there is productivity, you know, which is which doesn't get hampered. and you know we we continue to set expectations throughout and uh, you know achieve them regularly yeah uh, yeah can I, can i take that question shekhar yes please yeah so one great question and i think you know while we are talking about uh, how organizations actually are very keen on uh, you know ensuring that the productivity of the employees actually remains at uh, top notch uh, it's also equally important for employees to actually draw a line if the lines getting blurred between office and home uh, it becomes important for driving self discipline and there's actually a whole lot of information you'll actually find on working from home etiquette or wfh etiquette as they, as they call it uh, it's important for us to actually understand uh, you know that uh, we'll need to bring in build in actually enough uh, breaks uh, we cannot really be you know confined to a place we know it's actually a place where you know there are others living along with us and therefore it's important for respecting you know the spaces as well uh, I, and also you know there is a you need to draw a line where you get it, uh, get off work and then actually go go back to leading your life the work life balance becomes critical so how do we go about doing this you know uh, personal discipline is very very important you know uh, there are actually uh, you know pointers that indicate that you could really you should actually start your day as if you are going to the office which means that you know you do all of your uh, morning ablutions and be ready and then actually you know you start your day uh, like the way you started office uh and then typically i think you know i know it this is uh, psychological but it's important for you to actually you know also not be lounging around in you know a uh, home clothes so to say you know you got to actually be reasonably semi formally or formally dressed uh, video or otherwise you know because i think the whole notion of actually a decorum office decorum comes in from the way uh, you actually also are uh, dressed uh the other bit is also you know to take breaks you know like you would actually in the office you know take a coffee break you uh, know take a proper lunch break you know go around uh, the house you can't go outside now but you know go around the house uh, talk to folks at home uh, and then actually in the evening you got to draw a line many many people have come back and told me that they are working actually you know 50% more because they're consuming the commute time in, into working and then they just can't get off the laptop or actually you know whatever computer they're working on so suman i think uh, it all boils down to personal discipline and actually you know demarcating in our own ways the personal and the office life and driving a healthy work life balance so much so just to right. add just to add to what uh, lux was saying uh, so if you look at uh, some of the underlying issue with the uh, work from home has always been the mistrust you know who knows whether you are actually working at home or you are enjoying a day off right uh, but now this time when we are forced to work from home in fact provides a lot of opportunity to companies as well to redefine trust with employees uh, and that's where companies can adopt what you call the give to get ratio the give to get ratio for working from home which means that companies can clearly define the give part for employees 
both in quantitative and qualitative forms. For instance, number of hours that you have clogged, productivity achieved, outcomes met, and the return also define what employees will get in addition to their salary. So will they get recognized and awarded for mastering the art of working from home? Will they be allowed to engage in more meaningful work virtually and select maybe working hours as per their choice, starting work at 11 p.m. instead of 9 a.m.? So this is the work, uh, you know, give to get ratio for working from home and managing this trade off transparently is essential for trust. So in fact, this is a great opportunity for organizations as well to, to reestablish, to redefine trust with employees in the era of, uh, you know, working from home. Right. Thank you so much, both of you. Ah, there is Mr. Vidya Dharmadikari. Yeah. Yes, please, sir. Go ahead. Can you listen to me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. So, first of all, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, to the IET for organizing this useful uh, interaction. And uh, I have a question uh, related with the uh, same thing, work from home. Anyway, if you are working with, we are working from home, is it necessary that we build a, a big IT parks and big cities? Uh, instead of that, will, it, will the world, uh, world like prefer smaller towns to come up, come up as smaller IT parks so that uh, anyway the things will work because we are working from home and people, uh, there won't be any academic or there won't be any big issues and factories uh, in cities and uh, the life will be better when they are spread over smaller towns and the development of India in general or world in general will be even spread. Right. Yeah. So what I heard your question was that uh, with the working from home happening, the whole concentration of everybody working in IT parks in large cities will start going down and technology of working from home will democratize the whole thing and people can work from anywhere they want to whether it's from big city or a small city or a village and uh, that kind of spreads out the ability and the talent pool can spread out to smaller cities also taking the load of bigger cities if i understand that was the question uh, yeah would either one of you want to respond to that i mean i do believe that a huge possibility that can happen yeah, so maybe I can begin uh, first. Mm -hmm. I believe, uh, you know, assuming that we will not uh, be needing workplaces, you know, the physical workplaces in the future. I don't think that's going to happen, frankly speaking. What we are looking at more of a hybrid model, you know, as we move forward. We will still be needing, you know, the workplaces where employees can actually go and, uh, you know, actually collaborate in a real, you know, sense, right? So we don't think that, uh, you know, uh, workplaces will go away and there will be, a sh we will be requiring less uh, number of IT parks and all the, you know, spaces and everything. Rather, it's going to be more of an hybrid which means that uh, employees will have greater flexibility, greater opportunity uh, to, to, you know, to, to celebrate this, uh, you know, work from home. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of learning, you know, from the ongoing phenomena for companies. And hopefully, it'll encourage them to shift from being reactive to adopting proactive, you know, flexible policies for remote working supported by the, you know, right tools. Because when handled properly, right, work uh, from home should be celebrated and not seen as a last resort, you know, in unwanted situations. Uh, so, so, so definitely, I believe it's going to be a more of a hybrid world, what we are getting into, and not just, uh, you know, uh, the pure uh, work from home, work from anywhere. It's going to be more hybrid the way we look at it. Yeah. Right. Just to chime in on this, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Vidyadar, uh, I think it's actually a very valid question you asked. Workplace is not just about work. It's also about community. It's also about socializing. It's also about learning from each other. So workplaces will continue to be there. But I think your question was more related to whether it will actually, you know, move away from, you know, larger cities to smaller towns and all that. Absolutely. It's already happening. And I think, you know, there will actually be, you know, hubs wherever skill is available. And skill is actually the only only thing that, you know, makes people really, you know, or, or actually, you know, organizations to set up workplaces in smaller cities. With the advent of actually, you know, online learning tools, with actually the plethora of knowledge available online, you know, people from small towns and cities are now able to actually access world-class information. Stanford information, Ivy League, uh, you know, courses are easily available now for any student anywhere, and that will redefine the landscape. So there will be many, many mini Bangalore's 
as compared to one Bangalore and you know things like that. So that is going to definitely happen, and the next generation will actually reap the benefit of you know remote working and actually you know working as a consultant and not really tethered to a desk in one single organization, uh, Mr. Vidyadhar. Right, and we hope do hope that Sangli will be one of those places where you are speaking from. And that I move to help us to come out with uh, like this. I this can be one of the agenda in IED so that uh, many many small towns, especially the young people in town, which otherwise rush to big cities, they will stay in the cities and they will work from uh, in in this hybrid model as well. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. All right, Sunil David. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Sunil. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Shikh. Yeah, hi, Shikh. My, my question is to Lux. Uh, so, Lux, given your sales background, and, and and this is largely targeted to those who are in sales and business development roles, uh, when you have leadership today having to do the delicate balancing between trying to meet business objectives, at the same time trying to take care of the well-being of employees, the safety and well-being of employees, so... How do you find that? How do they take that uh, approach, uh, Lux? You know, what kind of balance they should strike? Because you're trying to put too much of pressure on sales and business development people in these difficult hours. Uh, it becomes really challenging, right? And India, the cult as a country, culturally, we are so used to meeting people and now trying to do things virtually makes it all the more difficult. Yeah, Sunil. Uh, first of all, great to hear from you. Hope you're doing well, Sunil. Um, so uh, I think this is a very pertinent question and is top on mind for everybody. Uh, we are all actually grappling with various issues and you know the least of them actually you know being uh, productivity and things like that at this juncture i think we are all actually you know resetting what it takes to actually make a be a good employee or a good leader and it's not necessary that you know people have to actually you know write charts you know like the way when we started off as rookies you know go and actually show uh, that we did about 14 calls or 15 calls and actually say that you know that's actually uh, the metric for uh, success or productivity uh, Sunil, I think, you know, from my own experience, uh, what we are actually trying to do is, you know, at this juncture, it's critical for us to actually, you know, mobilize our teams, rally, uh, get them around, uh, ensure that, you know, uh, they're all actually comfortable. Uh, we do a fair bit of actually, you know, uh, counseling in terms of, you know, uh, we do a daily uh, uh, connect call, particularly because a lot of uh, the team members are very young, probably staying alone, and it could be very depressing for them to actually not step out of the house. And some of them even have actually basic fundamental issues of, you know, uh, getting actually their next meal because they don't know how to cook and, you know, in most restaurants are closed and stuff like that. So what we do is, you know, essentially do a startup, um, uh, stand up call in the morning. Every morning and every evening we are actually connected. Uh, the issue of productivity, I think, is always there. You know, uh, the business of a business is to make profit, and that will actually remain today or later. You know, Corona or otherwise. You know, I think organizations exist to make profit. That will not go away. But what is changing, and very, very happily so, is that a large number of our clients are actually, you know, uh, happy to come on to you know video discussions. Like I said, actually earlier on uh, in a webinar that I was conducting this morning. Last week, I did actually 27 engagements over video, like the way I'm doing now. And uh, it was actually uh, business as usual. Nothing stopped. Last week actually was a good uh, week for our business as well. You know, we actually were able to, uh, you know, uh, conclude deals, talk to our clients, get them to actually, you know, uh, talk to them over video, uh, get them to actually understand, you know, get the uh, you know, I's dotted and the T's crossed. All of that actually is happening over video. And happily, like I said, Many organizations are actually learning the art of actually, you know, working remotely without having to actually, you know, shake the hand physically. So uh, this is the new normal. Uh, while it's taking time, it's actually happening, Sunil. Uh, we are in for actually, you know, this kind of a working for some more time. So we better get used to it and actually enjoy doing it while we are at it. Right. Okay. Now we're coming close to closing time, unless there are a few other questions. So I've got a question uh, from Amit Vaishnav. Uh, Amit Vaishnav is saying, when we think of future of jobs, how can aspirant, how could an aspirant plan his career into versatility by traversing careers? Because as we move forward, greater emphasis on our past experience is laid on. And let's say if I have to look forward 20 years from now, what would the best evaluation measure and medium to learn and understand the thing the things of future career and breaking the old paths. That's his question uh, to us. 
uh, very loaded question, Shikhar. Very and I think I there's so many that is sharing. Okay, but uh, you know, uh, uh, Amit, just look two years from now. You know, the landscape is changing actually so rapidly. Jobs that existed actually, you know, about ten years ago are no longer relevant. Uh, the jobs which are actually very hot right now on the market are actually just two to three years old. And I don't want to actually talk about the same jobs, you know, visualization, data scientist, and all of the stuff. We all know about all that. But what I would say is that, you know, your kaleidoscope is actually, you know, way, way ahead. 20 years is too vast a time. It is actually, uh, like we say in IT, three years is actually a generation. So 20 years is actually seven generations. You know, I, I don't want to hazard a guess actually that far away. But I would only say that, you know, when you look back, when you look at actually a situation that you were in and, you know, how you overcame that, because the... Uh, we will actually overcome this, you know. I had, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that you know this situation is actually you know just passing by. We will overcome the situation, but when you really look back, you'll see how we actually have defined the landscape, set new milestones, new metrics for performance, new metrics for productivity and engagement. All of this thing is actually going to be you know things that you will reminisce when you actually look back in time and probably sit with your children, or depending on your age, your children or grandchildren at that time. Amit. Yeah. Manish, anything to add on this one? Yeah, definitely. I believe uh, you know when we when we look at you know future jobs, right? I believe uh, uh, candidates, people who can uh, demonstrate uh, adaptability, the flexibility, you know, more of human centric skills. I believe they are going to be in much more demand because at the end of the day, right, the future of work won't be about beating the bots, but rather becoming better, you know, human. Uh, and all of us will need to enhance our current skill set, you know, in a way that is that many, you know, never expected in our life, right? Because no matter how technological our age becomes, ultimately we as humans still want the human connection. Uh, the example that I gave earlier, right, even for big data, data science jobs are more likely to demand creativity, teamwork, research, and writing skills than other jobs. And at the end, whether it's B2B or B2C job, right, it's all about becoming better human in the digital economy. And that is going to be very, very critical because, uh, you know, doubling down on soft skills is something that is not being you know taught in colleges something that we usually do not train our you know people there can be some soft skills uh, you know uh, courses that are being run across organizations right but at the end of the day uh, if you can demonstrate more on the empathy part creativity part innovation part i believe these are uh, you know the skills that are going to be much more important in the future in order to collaborate with machines because machines are going to pick up number of discrete tasks but they are not going to demonstrate the human behavior. And that's where the human centric skills are going to be much more important. Yeah, absolutely, Manish. I mean, couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and thanks, Lux. Now, we've come to the end of our uh, digital conversation for today. It has been a very interesting start in these uncertain times as we go through this whole process of learning new things, changing the way that we work, looking at uh, the, the topography of work changing, the geography of work changing from your office to your home, the social norms changing. We saw what uh, Lux showed in his presentation about how the organization is starting to look at your family as an extended part of the organization itself, of understanding what we go through, of people getting peeks into your drawing room, about getting into self-learning, about working with technology and machines, about understanding how to keep your productivity up, about creating trust within the organization and the employee, and about learning uh, new languages uh, around work. So it's been a great start. Thank you so much, so much for all of you attending. We had a huge number of people attending. I think we topped at about 126 attendees uh, at one point of time, if I'm not wrong, or slightly more than that. I'll probably get uh, details later. The presentations, collaterals, and possibly the video as well will be sent out to all the attendees. But I should remind you, this is the first of the conversations that we are having. IT India Digital Conversations will continue next Friday. We will come back with the next second uh, of the, these conversations, which is titled Mind Your Own Business, Maintaining Our Sanity in Times of a Pandemic. So we will talk about isolation, we'll talk about dealing with uh, working alone, dealing with uh, mental health issues, with dealing with wellness issues. So we're going to talk about, remember again, same time between two and three, same platform, Airmeet, Mind Your Own Business, 
maintaining our sanity in times of pandemic. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Lux. Thank you so much, Manish, for being here today. And we will continue this conversation as we go. Thank you very much. And be Bye. safe, Thank everybody. You. Be safe. Be isolated. Wash your hands. Thanks. Thanks, Shekhar. Thanks, Manish. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Shekhar. You. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.